Hi. Um, hello, everyone. Good evening on tonight. Uh, I guess it would be Saturday night. Everyone's probably uh, partying or doing something or, you know, maybe being with their families. I get it. Uh, this is the only time that I can put this out, so I will. This is my launch of For the People and By the People. This is a, uh, hopefully a video podcast, um, radio, whatever I can do. It's going to start off on a YouTube channel, but we are going to get the conservative voice out and the conservative questions that we don't, like, don't normally hear on, uh, mainstream media. So let's get down to it, uh, because I'm excited. The first talking point that I have is Creepy Joe Biden. Okay, Creepy Joe. He's running for president uh, among, like, I, I think it's like 50 now. <laughs> Democrats for uh, 2020 presidential, uh, the presidential election. And uh, I find it fascinating that it's Creepy Joe. Creepy Joe, like, not even the fact that his nickname is Creepy Joe. Okay, let, let's get over that point. Let's move to the actual, you know, brass knuckles of everything. What I find fascinating is that no other news network is actually talking about this. And um, not even Fox. <laughs> Surprisingly, everyone's like, oh my gosh, Fox News is a terrible thing. No, I mean, they're actually good people. They, they're they unbalanced. Only they, they haven't talked about this, which, again, fascinates me. Creepy Joe Biden is, uh, and I'm going to continue to, <laughs> I'm going to continue to call him that, uh, Creepy Joe, he, he doesn't have, I'm not worried about his creepy stance, although, I mean, it is subject to question. What is actually happening with that, um, with his presidential race that no one's really talking about is the Bill Barr investigation. And that's what we need to focus on. Bill Barr is investigating and, <laughs> I mean, he hasn't given us details or, like, not details, but facts yet, which is great. I mean, he, he but, like, when he says something or insinuates a problem, he's not doing it for political measure by any means. I mean, you look at this guy's career and he's never done that. He's been a straight shooter from the beginning. Um, he just wants an honest investigation. And from what he saw prior, like with the whole um, Russian collusion thing, I mean, he saw it was like absolutely ridiculous. And that's what, you know, like he kind of wants to go against. Like he's not like so. <laughs> Anywho, he's not that kind of guy. So when he goes and. Give me a moment. I know you're like wondering, okay, why is Creepy Joe involved with Bar right now? Hang on with me for a minute. Bar right now is investigating the introduction of the investigation of the Russian collusion, which, by the way, the American taxpayers spent $35 million on, okay? 22 months of crazy media coverage on this. I mean, it was breathless of how they could not stop talking about it. And I mean, even, uh, I think it was MSNBC and CNN that actually accused the president for treason, treason. Okay. This is a high crime punishable by death. And they had already accused the president for treason. While this whole charade was going on, we're not going to do that anymore. I mean, clearly this was completely political. This was to go like, I mean, this is to justify why Hillary Clinton lost or why their team lost during a whole Spygate thing. And I can understand why they're upset. I mean, they they itemized or utilized uh, the CIA, the FBI, every center, every agency that they could to spy on the Trump campaign. And don't tell me that they didn't spy. They did. At first, they all laughed about it when Trump, I think it was a tweet that he uh, uh, put out there stating that, oh, um, Obama wiretapped, like wiretapped my, uh, my campaign. And everyone's laughing at him. And even I got at work 
laughed at. Like, oh, your boy Trump is making up these delusional things. I'm like, just wait a minute, though, because, I mean, remember, he is the president. He's getting these uh, intelligence briefings. He knows a little bit more than we do. Okay, so let's calm down. Sure enough, it came out that no, <laughs> little Brennan and um, what's his face, uh, uh, Clapper, and including Comey. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I'm going to have a conversation. I'm going to write that down real quick. Um, Comey even stated that, uh, oh, no, well, you know, they're, it's, like, it's like they're trying to, you know, put dirt over it or uh, shove shove the dirt under the rug. Now. And, uh, of course, now everyone's turning on each other. But, anywho, so you've got these guys that were involved in the Obama administration. Now it's to a point where Obama knew it. He had to have. And it's getting to the point where it's actually being proven now. Obama knew and maybe possibly even directed this whole nonsense of uh, like a kind of like a Watergate. You know, they love to talk about Nixon and the Watergate scandal and everything like that. I think that I think the scandal blows Watergate out of the water. Uh, it, it, what happened here was really bad. So you've got Joe Biden, creepy Joe running for president. No one's talking about this. The fact that, Hey, during the time, I mean, everything that I just discussed right now, the fact that Obama knew about it, the fact that uh, you have every intelligence, like major intelligence um, officials now pointing fingers, by the way, disgraced intelligence officials that were fired or quit because, oh, crap, we've got to run and hide. Um, now they're, you know, like saying like they're not even denying that it happened. Remember, during that time, Joe Biden was the vice president of the United States. So if Obama knew it, Joe Biden knew it. 100% fact. I mean, that would be a fact. Joe doesn't know any more than uh, Obama, and Obama doesn't know any more than Joe. I mean, they're working hand in hand. Yeah, I think it was, uh, what movie is it? Hot Shots. <laughs> they were uh, doing a parody off of uh, Top Gun where the, you know, Admiral came down. And he's talking about these two crabs that were, like kind of like uh, got after him. He's like, no, like, they work in pairs. <laughs> That's how Joe and uh, Osama, I'm sorry, um, Obama, Barack, Barack Hussein Obama. Yeah, by the way, that was our president. Uh, they actually worked in pairs. They worked together on this. So let's, I, I, I would find it hilarious if um, Creepy Joe, actually not even for the creepy part, but the fact that he's being investigated right now and um, he's incredibly silent on the situation. Not even with his, uh, I think, uh, like right now, not even, I think, right now there's an investigation going on with the Ukraine and um, the Ukraine actually has uh, intelligence that is giving it to the United States of how him and his son Hunter made some money out there. They were investigated from some deal that was made uh, by Hunter. I mean, you could read into it. But, I mean, this guy, I mean, he's got so many problems right now to for anyone to actually say that, oh, yeah, you know, if jo Joe Biden wins the, you know, nominee for the Democrat primary, he's going to win the election. No, far from it. Trust me. He's got a lot of skeletons that are being exposed even now. And, and even uh, this idiot radical uh, AOC is trying to go against him, too, which, go for it. I don't give a crap. Honestly, I hate, don't hate, but <laughs> I have a distaste for anyone on the Democrat Party or the Democrat side right now because they just, they're, they're insane. <laughs> Let's just call it for what it is. All right. Uh, moving on to the next topic, border crisis. We have a border crisis. and <laughs> Let's... Let's look back on the mainstream media of how they stated that um, it was a manufactured crisis. How many times did I read 
on a headline, manufactured crisis, Trump manufactured a crisis, mainstream media, it's a manufactured crisis, it's a manufactured crisis, blah, 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 blah. I mean, shoot me in the head with how many times they had to say it. Only it wasn't true. Trump was right. It was a crisis. Now we're dealing with, I mean, you look in the past years where they're talking about like hundreds of thousands uh, of uh, illegals crossing our border, border each year. We're not talking about hundreds of thousands. We're talking about 1.2 million now by the end of 2019. How is that not a, like, not a crisis? No one wanted to talk about it. No one. At least on the left. I mean, they're, they're just, they're not oblivious to it. I don't think they are. I mean, I think they'd be smart enough to realize that there is a problem going on, but they don't want to talk about it because it doesn't fit their narrative. Well, guess what, lefties? Guess what, Democrats and like who actually hold legislative power? There is a crisis. You need to do something about it. I mean, when, like, in the House of Representatives, how they gained the House of Representatives was talking about how, oh, no, we're not going to go for impeaching Trump or anything like that. We're going to focus on the problems. We're going to focus on health care. We're going to uh, focus on immigration, blah, 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 blah. What have they done since then? Nothing. I'll tell you, it's not nothing. I'll tell you what they've done. They've focused six now, six committees on the uh, 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 to investigate Mueller's final report. Mueller's final report, in which they all said we need to wait for the final report to come through, and blah blah blah. Like I mean, I mean, this was their like holy grail, and it came out, and it wasn't what they wanted. I mean, he did. I mean, don't get me wrong. Mueller is an idiot. He's not an idiot. He's a sleazeball. Mueller purposely had that volume two out there for obstruction. Okay, so like just so everyone knows, if you're not like if you're not committed or indicted of a crime, you're not supposed to talk about it. But no, he goes into detail in volume two about how he could have been obstructing justice and blah, blah, blah. I mean, Mueller is feeding these left nut cases who actually serve as a legislative branch in our government. I'm not kidding. I mean, I could imagine feeding it to a mental institution so, you know, they can go ahead and, you know, bark all day and maybe create some ideas. But no, this is actually a legislative uh, part of our government that that he's feeding it to, volume two, even though it was announced um, already, which, by the way, is another thing that you have to remember. Um... He, he made volume two to create this whole dishevelness and it's not really, you know, we're not really, uh, you know, making him okay or anything like that. We're just saying that this happened. Okay, well, if you're not indicting him, if you're not actually pushing for prosecution, you shouldn't have any power to announce any of this. But they did. And while this is going on, And the six committees in the House that are now going after the final report, I mean, like like they're going to find anything that Mueller hasn't found. Okay, give me a break. I mean, this is all show. This is all show. I mean, Goebbels would be proud right now. He really would. I, I think uh, uh, if he, we were to resurrect him right now, he'd be really supporting the Democrat Party in uh, America and Americans' government. But yeah, so while this is all going on, now we have this border crisis, and instead of actually focusing on that issue, they're going after uh, a final report of um, obstruction of justice, or the, the let's, let's, by the way, call it Russian collusion. Because that was what was originally started, right? Yeah. So, I mean, take that with a grain of salt. Um, The next issue I want to go into, sorry, I have to be real quick with this. I can't really detail. I know sometimes, like, I leave ends untied, but that's why comments, you need to comment below, uh, share it, whatever, and uh, um, 
also uh, make sure you get that ringer on there to let you know when the next video comes out. So the next, uh, the next topic I want to talk about, and this is a very heavy hearted topic, uh, abortion. So right now, you've got Arkansas, Louisiana, North and South Dakota, now Alabama, and most recently Missouri, with one of the strictest abortion ban laws. I am 100% for this. They want to talk about incest. They want to talk about rape. What if this person went into, you know, got raped by their uncle or whatever? You know what? I don't give a shit. Does that mean the life in that body means any less? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I feel bad for the person that's going through this, but remember, that's like a what? A 0.1% of the population in that state that actually has to go through it? Who has an incest issue? Who has a rape issue? Remember, this is state legislation. This isn't federal. And people are freaking out. Because states are starting to wake up to the fact, like, wait a minute, like, we need to actually, like, provide, like, we need to have sanctity in life. Remember, we started off, our, like, our founders, our framers, started off by, uh, by God's inalienable, uh, uh, inalienable rights. And that was life. Life was the first one. The right to life. So why don't we do that? This is why I'm a huge supporter for it. A lot of people bash me on the right and left, especially the left, but I've actually gotten bashed uh, from people on the right as well as far as uh, where to take these abortion ban laws and abortion laws, whatever. I am pro-life. That includes incest that includes rape that includes anything unless there needs to be a scenario in which the doctor states hey you're gonna die we need to get this out of you right now fine okay like i mean i don't think there's any law against that right now but when it comes to incest or rape i get it it's a very traumatic experience for that person but it doesn't make the person who's growing inside that woman, their life any less valuable than the per, uh, than the baby inside of another married couple that planned it. Okay? Remember that. Each life is God's life. And if you don't like it, then you can, I mean, go ahead, keep marching with your vagina hats and dresses of vagina, whatever. But it doesn't excuse the truth of the matter. Every life is important regardless of how it's conceived. It is a life. We have to stop desensitizing the situation of murder of unborn children. You want to make an excuse for it? You're desensitizing it. You want to keep put, like pointing fingers or doing whatever? You're desensitizing it. It is a life. That's it. <sighs> so, ending this conversation with you all, and it, it's been a great first launch, I think, uh, very spirited, and I can't wait to hook up a phone so I can get callers in. One of the things that I found uh, from watching a movie today um, which would, I think, be perfect for my situation right now. Am I in the wrong place at the right time, or I am in the right place at the wrong time? That will be for history to decide. Thank you very much for everyone that stayed tuned, who listened through this whole thing. Please comment below. I really love you all, and, uh, um, next week is uh, Memorial Day weekend. We're going to be doing a special tribute for Memorial Day. So I, uh, I remember talking to a friend of mine. She wanted me to go into uh, vaccinations and anti or pro vaccinations. I will do that. I, prom I promise you, Anna, I've got you in my uh, crosshairs. But um, 
uh, for next weekend, it is about Memorial Day and those that gave the ultimate sacrifice. So we're going to do a special for that. Thank you for listening. Uh, it's our first launch. So, uh, I mean, I should probably just leave it at that. Thank you. God bless you all and God bless the United States of America.